What up, everybody? It's your boy DT from Belita at TV, and we are back in the studio getting started with Studio 15. And this week, we're building on our focus of recording and editing dialogue. So last week we discussed the start page in depth as well as the new song page or what I was calling the session setup page and how you can adjust those options there as well as later on after the fact inside the session that you're working on. And then we did just a little bit of recording and also discussed how to set up templates to speed up your workflow. So if you need to see any of that information, I'll put a link or a card up here so you can see that. Uh, but today that's what we're going to do is jump into recording and editing a little bit further in Studio. Studio One. And last week, I know I had my junky laptop microphone hooked up and I it just sounded terrible. So I've actually got a microphone worth recording today. Uh, so we're going to do that now and just record something and start working on it. So let's jump in. Okay, so here we are inside of Studio One. You can see that I've already got a mono track created for myself. I have it named so that I can stay organized, even though there's only one track in this session. Naming your stuff is very important to help you stay organized. And then also to make sure Studio One knows which track I'm recording on, I have this track armed and ready, which enables the metering here so I can double check my levels and make sure they're at a comfortable setting, which again is about three fourths of the way up the meter or 75% because that leaves enough headroom so that if you get a little louder, you're not clipping. And it's also a comfortable level where it's not too soft, right? Um, so there's no need to blast this way, way, way up there. Um, but you do want a comfortable level and that's where we're at now. So let's go ahead and start recording. I've prepared a dummy script for myself here and I'm just going to go ahead and hit the record button and read it. So let's pretend we're recording a script. And so as you're recording yourself, you're paying attention to your pitch, power and pacing. Now there's a reason I stopped with an extra long pause there, but we'll come back to that later. And so as you're recording yourself, you're paying attention to your pitch, power, and pacing. And as you're reading along, you start to think, this is what my voice sounds like? Wow, I had no idea. True story, when most people hear a recording of themselves for the first time in a studio, they are surprised. But anyway, we've recorded the audio now, so what comes next in this little process? Well, editing. So we're gonna disable the recording here, on this track and we're gonna find that really long pause. I'm pretty sure it's right here. And pacing. Yep, that's the long pause. And so there's two reasons why I put this little mistake in here for you or this long pause. And the first reason is because you'll thank yourself later in the editing if you do this next tip I'm gonna share. So the first reason is if you're a beginner and you're reading a sentence on your script, you're doing some VO work, you mess up in the middle of the sentence. What you wanna do is just pause for a couple of seconds and start at the very beginning of that sentence. Get it all the way through, nail it perfect. Because it's much easier to stitch the ends and beginnings of sentences together versus trying to stitch the middle of one sentence together. Because let's say you, you messed up in the middle of the sentence, now you try to pick up right where you left off. Well, now you have to start remembering stuff like, okay, your pitch, how fast you were reading, how you were emphasizing certain words and things like that, because you have to match it right in the middle of the sentence. That's really, really hard to do. So if you just start from the beginning of the sentence and get that nice clean take, it's much more coherent and much less noticeable than if you're trying to stitch it right in the middle of the sentence. And the second reason is because I wanted to have something to edit to show you guys how to edit in Studio One. So let's jump back into the box here and let's see how would we edit this. Now, the first thing I want to do is point out, if you look here, you see how my play bar that's following my cursor is really jumpy. It's just snapping to all these little hash marks on the ruler at the top of the screen. Well, that's because your snap to grid option is, in, is enabled. And the way you turn that off is this little button right up here, toggle snap. So we're going to turn off snap. And now notice how that moves very fluidly along with the cursor. So now what we want to do is find the top of the errant sentence, which it looks like I'm already right there. So let's go ahead and click there. And notice because I have the snap uh, untoggled or turned off, whatever you wanna call it, I can select exactly where I want my play bar to be. So I want it right in, be in the beginning of the sentence and let's play this here. Now there's a reason I stopped. With okay, so that is not the beginning of the sentence. Let me go to the beginning of the actual errant sentence, which I'm pretty sure is right here now. 
And so as you're recording yourself, you're paying it. Ah, that's exactly where I wanna be. So let's zoom in and let's just get this just a little tighter to the beginning of that. Now again, notice how my little cursor changes depending on where I am on the region. If I'm on the bottom, I have an arrow so I can click and drag the region wherever I want to. And if I am on the top, I get this little plus sign. Well, if you're not getting the plus sign, that's okay. Just double check and make sure that your smart tool option is enabled. And the way you do that is by clicking on this little bar right here to the left. And then you should get this little plus. Now, once you have that, go ahead and double click on that region and notice how it split that region into two. And you also have some more options with your smart tool. You can shorten one region or the other here, or if you go to the bottom in between those two regions on that split, you can also select where you want that split to occur. You can move it if you've split it in the wrong place, which is really cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Control Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo, to go right back to where I want. Now I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna erase all the stuff that I don't need. So I'm gonna erase the errant sentence, the long pregnant pause where I explained what I was doing here. And now we're at the top of the new sentence here. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of leeway. We're gonna cinch this up right to the end of the opening sentence. And let's go ahead and overlap this just a little bit. And the reason for that is because we want this to sound like a nice, smooth, uh, coherent thought, one single thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to audio, create crossfades, and now there has been a crossfade. If you zoom in, there's been just a little bit of a fade in between these two regions to smooth out what's happening here. So now if we zoom out, let's just play this. And the one thing that we're gonna listen for now is the timing and how long that pause is and just make sure everything is nice and coherent and natural. We don't want anything to sound unnatural. So timing is a big uh, part of this. So let's play back. So let's pretend we're recording a script. And so as you're recording yourself, you're... So as we watch the playback there, you could see where the edit was, but it was virtually inaudible. And that's what you want, a nice clean take for your listeners when you're making your edits on your recordings. One awesome tool to also have in your arsenal that costs you nothing but a little bit of time is room tone. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me go ahead and show the track here and you'll see. I'll show you exactly what room tone is. I'm gonna play it back for you. <laughs> Notice it's nothing. Literally like you can barely hear that, but did you see that the meter over here was moving? There was sound. Literally all room tone is, is you take 10 or 15 seconds, just hit record on your Studio One uh, software, let your mic hear the sound of your silent room. So if you have any ticking clocks, if you have any papers you're shuffling, anything like that, even yourself, just don't move anything and let the mic hear the silence of the room. And the reason room tone is so helpful is let's say you need to put a pause in between this recording here. Well, if I put a pause here, and let me mute that room tone, and you play this in a script. And so as you're, you can't really hear it super well here, but you, you could tell where the audio dropped out in this space right here. That can be very jarring to your listeners when they hear the audio cut off to negative infinity and come back on to the level that you were at. So room tone allows you to space things out while still quote unquote, keeping people in the room with you. The other nice thing about room tone is in between your pauses, let's face it, in the days of home recording, you know, you're in the middle of getting that perfect take, you end the sentence and there goes your neighbor's dog barking for no reason again, outside, running around, barking its head off, and now you've got that in your recording. So how do you get rid of it? Well, enter room tone, right? Let's say there's a dog bark here. Well, now all we have to do is just double click this region, remove it, and we've got silence, no barks, bark be gone, right? So there you go, there are some really cool tips and tricks for recording and editing dialogue in Studio One, especially room tone, one of my favorite tricks of all time. 
Hey there, Editor DT here in the video really quick. Just forgot to mention a couple things about that room tone, and that is that you want the sound of your room when it is being recorded to be as low as possible. Ideally, you want your room tone to be recorded coming in at a level of like minus 60 dB or lower. And then also one other thing that I forgot to explain, let's jump over to Studio One really quick, and that is with room tone, yes, we have 10 or 15 seconds of room tone here, but we don't need all of that if we're tr just trying to fill a gap right here. So basically I've got a nice little sample of room tone here. So how you would edit this is go ahead and chop this off like so. And let's say we don't need that room tone for now. So I'm going to go ahead and hold command M and command M to mute those or control M. And that of course is if you have your keyboard settings mapped like mine, which are mapped for Pro Tools. But anyway, this is really all we need right here. And then to make that edit even more seamless, again, we're gonna create our fades like so. And now you'd have a nice smooth transition from this to your room tone back to the next region. So that's how you can make really nice pauses using that room tone when you record. And one other thing that I wanna to mention too is there's always an easier way to do things as you get better at editing and working in Studio One. And that was one thing I forgot to show you was the ripple edit tool. Let's, let's just for instance say that right here, we need to take this section uh, out right here. Instead of deleting this and doing this where you drag it back, well, check out the ripple edit tool. It's this one right next to your grid snap tool. So if you click this, check out what happens on this track when I delete this unwanted section. Boom, it just cinches it up for you. And now all you have to do is create your crossfades. Now, how smooth is that? And look at that, it made the crossfades for you. So if you're doing dialogue or whatever, you can hit that ripple edit tool if that makes it easier for you. And uh, you can also do it the old fashioned way that I showed you earlier by dragging and dropping. So those are some of the things that I wanted to show you about room tone and also show you that ripple edit tool. Now back to the video. And let's not forget the other thing that I was going to show you, and that was how you can change your keyboard mappings in Studio One. So on the Mac, I'm going to go to Studio One and you click on Preferences. Now, I believe in Windows, there is a, a Studio One menu more towards this side of the menu, and you have the same thing. It's Preferences or it says Options in the menu. So I'm going to click on that. And if you go to General, notice here keyboard shortcuts and this will tell you what your keyboard shortcuts are set to so right now mine is pro tools modified because i've also built in some extra little key commands that i use personally so i've kind of customized it a little bit but look at this you can use studio one settings right out of the box you have cubase you have logic you have cakewalk and now you even have the option to import keyboard settings from other places so if you've saved them some kind of way you can import them and you can also export them which is really really cool so again it just goes to show how wonderful this software is and how personas has worked very hard to make everyone feel welcome with using their software so they definitely get the vote in my book bully dad so guys that does it for me today thank you for watching this video stick around as i've got more tutorials coming your way and like and subscribe all that good stuff and as always i don't really have a saying for this channel so 